A very good morning from Scotland. I am back. Last time I was here, I drove an absolutely epic road trip in the north called the North Coast 500. This time I'm in the south of Scotland. I'm about as far south as you can get in a place called Dumfries, which is where the South West Coastal 300 begins and ends. And that's the road trip I'm gonna be doing over the next few videos. So if you are interested in seeing a little bit more of the Scottish lowlands as I am, then consider joining me over the next few videos. It is gonna be one heck of an adventure. to do a full tour of Dumfries when I come back here in about a week's time hopefully having successfully completed the road trip but there are going to be some challenges and the first challenge will definitely be the fuel situation here in the UK we're currently going through a fuel crisis petrol stations are running out of petrol they're either closing down or there are these massive queues of people trying to get fuel at the moment it's being rationed 30 pounds is the maximum you can buy but I'm hoping as I make my way around the route to keep my eye out for fuel stations when, where I see some that's available I'm going to definitely fill up and make sure that I can complete the route. The second challenge is definitely going to be the weather. For road trips like this you really want some decent weather but unfortunately the forecast is saying that it's going to be raining on most days and there is quite a high likelihood of that rain so all I can do there is keep my fingers crossed that the weather patterns in the area change. And the third and final challenge is going to be time. I have scheduled the route to give me six days to get around and that includes dipping in and out of various places en route including the Galloway National Forest but I'm just hoping there's a lot to see. I'm hoping that I've scheduled it properly so I get enough time in each place to do a little bit of exploring. I'm currently in the heart of Dumfries. I'm on an old beautiful stone bridge over the river there's a, a beautiful town behind me i'm looking forward to exploring this in a week's time but for now i wanted to tell you a little bit about the route i'll be following so the southwest coastal is around the galloway national forest and i'll be driving it in an anti-clockwise direction because i want to leave the coastal section until last the idea is that i'm going to head out of dumfries over towards lockerbie up to Moffat and then over to Ayr and then down the west coast to Stranra and then along the south coast of Scotland towards Dumfries and seeing lots of things on the way so stick with me it's going to be a cracking adventure. For now I am going to head through the town of Dumfries and get back in the car and start this journey. It's time for me to go Seven miles south of Dumfries is Carlaverock Castle. That's this incredible building behind me. It is a triangular shaped castle built in the 13th century, complete with a moat and a drawbridge. It is closed inside at the moment, unfortunately, due to ongoing restoration works, but you can come here whilst it's closed and take a look around the grounds, take some photographs of the castle. I was just about to leave and then I spotted a sign that said that over the bridge here is the original Carlaverock Castle that was built in the early part of the 1200s. Apparently this was so close to the sea in those days it used to have a harbour just next door. The sea levels were much higher back then. There's the bridge I crossed. 
and yes indeed you can see lots of foundations and the outline of the original castle pretty interesting stuff okay let's get on that road I'm just outside of the small Scottish town of Lockerbie now and I'm in a cemetery close by and here is a memorial garden that is dedicated to the victims who died during the Lockerbie disaster. So the 21st of December 1988 on a Pan Am flight 103 to be precise. The flight was from Frankfurt in Germany to Detroit in the United States and it had two stopovers, one in London and one in New York. And it was the London to New York stretch where in the skies here above Lockerbie, a terrorist bomb exploded on board the aircraft and destroyed it almost instantly. 243 passengers on the aeroplane died, 16 crew members and 11 residents on the ground just after seven o'clock in the evening. So, I am hoping to find the memorial that is here in the cemetery and pay my respects. I'm just making my way now into the small village of Lockerbie. I'm on the outskirts really, and I'm at a place called Rosewood Crescent, which is where a large part of the aircraft came down. It sadly destroyed a number of houses, and I'm kind of in the garden area. They haven't replaced the houses, obviously, but they have built a kind of garden area in the place of those houses and uh, I've just come to have a look to see what's here and there is another memorial dedicated to a number of the victims perhaps these were the victims who died on the ground but uh, there are some flowers out and a little plaque here as well I'm right in the centre of the village of Lockerbie now, population here of about 4,000 people and lots of red sandstone buildings I've noticed, including the one opposite which I think is the town hall. Look at that, what an incredible tower with a clock up there as well. And then if I pan to the right here you can see what is the high street of the village. Typical Scottish High Street, I guess. Fish and chip bar on the right, World War I statue on the left. You can see the rolling hills behind the houses. That is where I'm heading to hopefully next. Car is parked just up here on the left. I'm gonna head back to the car and my next stop will be Moffat. driven past Moffat and I'm at the Grey Mare's Tail Waterfall. On the way here it was raining, then it was sunny, then it was raining, then it was sunny. You get the idea the weather is changing constantly but the sun is now out. It is absolutely beautiful actually. It's shining on the top of some of these hills you can see behind me there. Look how pretty this is. I love these kind of rivers. Rocky River going under the stone bridge over there in the distance. That's the main road actually over that bridge. And the car park where I've just parked my car is straight ahead. But the waterfall is in that direction, round by that valley. So I'm gonna head along here and see how far I get. It is very unlikely I'm gonna get all the way up because I think it's about a 45 minute to an hour walk. 
and I want to get back into Moffat and do some exploring there before calling it a day. But we'll see if we can get a bit of elevation and, uh, and see that waterfall. I am about 15 minutes up the trail and getting some incredible views over the car park down there and the river and this incredible Moffat Valley, I think it's called. And you see the river and the road running through it. And if I come round here, I'm starting to pick up some excellent views of the waterfall itself. One of the highest in the UK, 60 meters. That's over 200 feet and it comes from a lock called Loch Skeen, which is about half an hour's walk past the waterfall. Okay, I've made it to a little town called Moffat and this is my final destination today. I will show you around the town and uh, then I'll take you back to the B&B that I'm staying at tonight, my first overnight stay on the Southwest Coastal 300. I'll tell you how much the accommodation costs and what you get for your money out in this way. But Moffat looks good. As said, I'm gonna do a little bit of exploring in the town first. So, let's go see what we can find. It is just starting to rain again, would you believe? Moffat is a pretty popular place to stay actually, here in the south of Scotland, for two reasons. Number one, it's very popular with walkers and hikers because there's so many incredible trails around the area. You saw one of them earlier, the waterfall that I visited. Wish I could have hiked a bit further up, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, it's starting to rain a bit heavier. Number two, the reason why people come here is because it's a really cool place. Look at these lovely little narrow streets with flowers. You can see a little cottage here. I'm going to have to put this camera away because it's coming down quite hard. But look at that little cottage ahead of me with the flowers. Beautiful place. Right, okay. Let's go find some cover from the rain. Straight ahead is the town hall and I'm on the high street. It is kind of a two-laned high street. One there in front of me, and then just on the other side of this parking area is another part of the high street. Lots of nice buildings, shops, restaurants, plenty of pubs, and down there is a little shop that I want to show you. The home of Moffat Toffee. Apparently very famous in this area around the UK, I would imagine. Perhaps even around the world. That's gotta be my favorite building so far with the clock tower. And then just round to the right here is the Star Hotel, verified by the Guinness Book of World Records, the narrowest hotel in the world at six meters. Moffat. It has been a really good place to stay. Five, ten minutes walk from the high street. 
free parking outside, loads of roadside parking, and also some parking spaces around the back of the B&B. I managed to get one of those last night. Room has been comfortable. I'll give you a quick tour. So we've got a very comfortable bed. We have a kettle over there in the corner. We've got a sink in the room because even though the bathroom is private, it's not attached to the room. Up the other end, we've got some storage space and a nice view out the window. Breakfast is included in the price. It was a cooked breakfast this morning along with a side buffet of cereals and fruit. Really, really good. The price for all of this is £50 a night, which I thought was a bargain. You pay at the hotel, so I'm just about to go down and do that. And then I'm going to head back out on the road on the Southwest Coastal 300. So if you want to come along, join me in the next video. I am heading for Scotland's highest village. See you there.